This is lesson 12 of A Witch's Primer Revisited. So far, you've been engaging in some very exciting work. You have been purifying your aura every day, consecrating your food. You've undergone an intensive five-week training to develop your five magical bodies. You've aligned these magical bodies and started to open up your energy centers. And you've also been focusing on grounding and centering and working with an orb of light daily. That's a lot of work, and you're doing great. All of this together offers protection and helps you to enter deeper states of trance, especially that orb of light. A key aspect of reaching magical states of consciousness is that trance state, and so that's a good thing to practice every day. Next, after we've built this base of practice and power, we can focus on raising energy and directing it so that we can learn in subsequent lessons things like casting circles, spell casting, building thought forms, etc. For this next week, I'd like for you to incorporate raising and directing power into your daily practice. And as we progress, we will use this skill of raising and directing power to create thought forms and similar things. But for now, we're just focusing on practicing raising and directing power. And once you raise power, you can practice directing it through your hands, specifically through the palms of your hands. And then you can practice channeling the power through your athame, and also through your wand, and even through other tools. Start sitting comfortably in a chair or on the floor. Once you've completed your grounding and centering and conjured your orb of light, then you'll open your energy centers. And you can do that through listening to those meditations, or by this time, you can probably dump the recordings unless you really like them and just do it on your own. And it becomes a streamlined thing where you do a grounding and centering, conjure the orb of light, and then open your energy centers from the base of your spine up through the crown. And you can get to being able to do that rather rapidly. And as you practice, not only does it get to be more streamlined and quick, but it becomes more efficient and powerful. Once you've done all that, to practice raising and directing energy, you're going to start by taking some deep breaths in through your nose if you can. And if you're congested, then you can breathe through your mouth. But nose Breathing is best if you can do it. So you can either do it in and out through your nose or in through your nose and out through your mouth. As you inhale, I want you to start feeling the energy rising up the right side of your body over your head. And as you exhale, you flow this energy down the left side of your body. And repeat this at least five times where you're inhaling energy up the right side of your body and exhaling energy down the left side of your body. Then after doing about five circuits of that, you'll start to see that energy moving on its own, independent of your breathing, up the right side of your body and down the left side of your body. This will create sort of a spinning sensation around you. Once you have that established, as you inhale, start focusing on the energy rising up the back side of your body and exhaling down the front of your body. You do about five of those where you inhale up the back of your body and exhale down the front of your body. See this spinning simultaneously, where it's spinning up the right, down the left, and up the back and down the front. Those two circuits of energy are happening simultaneously, one moving up the right side and down the left side of your body, and the other one up the back and down the front of your body in a continuous cycle. While you're doing that, keep your rhythmic breathing up. That energy is going to start spinning at its own rate, independent of your breath. As you do that, notice the energy as you inhale moving up the center of your spine. And as you exhale, see it cascading down all around your body, creating a 360 degree cascade of energy around you. Up the center of your body as you inhale and all about you as you exhale, like a fountain of energy. You do about five of those. For the first few days, after you've finished raising this energy, doing all those three things, up the right side, down the left side, 
up the back, down the front, up the center, all around you. Sit with your palms facing each other just in front of your solar plexus, keeping your hands relaxed and slightly cupped facing towards each other. And just experiment with the energy that you've raised, and you'll feel the energy in your palms. Just notice it. Bring your palms closer together, move them apart, feel the magnetic pull that they create. Notice the attraction as they come closer, and maybe the push as they move farther from each other. Just sensing the magnetic and the repulsive forces at play, both together. And there's no right or wrong way to notice this. Just notice what you do feel. And this exercise of raising the energy is going to enhance your own electromagnetic field or aura. And then this exercise with your palms is going to help you to start to be aware of how that energy is experienced. Everybody experiences things differently. So it's important for you to experience what you experience and to discover how you sense this energy. But focusing on engaging with this energy is all you have to do after you raise it. Just experiment with that for a few days. Some people see it as like a glitter or a dust when they look at the space between their palms. Some people don't see anything at all. Some people see a cloud. Some people see a mist. Some people see a light. Just notice what you see or don't see and how you perceive it. After you've done that for a couple or three days, start to learn how to direct the energy. In order to do this, you want to start out by having a large bowl or cauldron filled with water and some salt, a couple tablespoons full of salt at least in the water and mix it up. Put it on your altar, or if you don't have an altar yet, just put it on either a table in front of you, or if you're sitting on the floor, put it on the floor in front of you. Why we do this is because salted water will neutralize energy. In this way, you can practice directing energy and projecting it into the salted water, and then you can comfortably work with this and direct this energy without worrying about residual effects of raising and directing energy. Later on, we're going to program the energy for specific results, but we're not programming the energy for anything. We're just raising it and focusing it. We're practicing. Think of it as target practice, like at a shooting range or practicing archery or darts. It's not a harmful energy necessarily, but whenever you're raising a large amount of energy and directing it, you might have some effects. So having that large bowl or cauldron of salted water gives you the ability to just practice raising and directing energy, and it just neutralizes it, and so you don't have to worry about it. Direct the energy first from your palms for a few days, or maybe a couple days. So just focus on what it feels like to will the energy toward the cauldron or bowl of salted water. Notice how it feels to direct the raised energy toward the water and observe any effects that you might experience. Don't worry about using any kind of specific colors or types of energy or anything fancy. Just see what naturally emerges. You might see that blue witch light, or you might see a white light, or you might not see anything at all. Just get a general sense of the energy after you've raised it and now projecting it. You may want to sync up your breath with it so you feel like you're taking a big deep breath. And as you exhale, you feel like the energy is moving through your palms into the water. Is it a steady stream? Does it feel like it's in spurts? What does it feel like? And then as you're noticing, then you can start to change it and just play with it. You're just playing with it. You don't have to worry about becoming any kind of expert or anything. You're just playing with raising and directing energy into a bowl of salt water. Once you're comfortable with this, then start experimenting with different colors. So you can start with a natural color like a white light or that bluish witch light, which resembles a Bunsen burner or gas flame. Then visualize different colors of light. See blue light, orange light, red light going through your palms. Just practice and see how you do. After you get fairly decent at that, you can start seeing a couple different colors simultaneously going through your palms. Now, once you're feeling comfortable with that, then start working with your athame. That's the easiest tool to use to direct energy. It's got a metal blade and it's and it's usually got a point. So feel like you're able to start to move energy instead of through two palms, just through the palm that's holding the athame. 
through the blade and notice how you can make a very thin focus stream of light and then play with the different colors and things like that. Then notice how you can use the side of your athame to, to do like a spray of energy into the water. Then you can start to practice drawing different kinds of shapes with your athame and create a pattern of energy with the tip of your athame or with the side of your athame. Try changing your hands that you're holding the athame in and see what the difference is. After you're done with the athame, try it with your wand and see the difference with your wand. The wand tends to be a little bit more subtle and more gentle, whereas the athame seems to, for many of us, have more oomph to it. But they each have their own place. And so just practice directing energy through those two tools. Like I said before, with each of those, try all the colors. So this is a fun week. It really is, where you learn how to raise energy and you learn how to direct energy. Now, when you're done with all of this, you want to make sure that you ground and center again. And any excess energy that's in your body that you've raised, just feel like it's flowing back into the earth gently. And you keep all the energy that you want, but you release the rest. Because if you don't do that, you can get amped up and irritable. You don't want to do that. You don't want to raise a bunch of energy and then forget to release it. So let go of any excess energy. You can just do another grounding and centering and just toss that salt water. I wouldn't even use it to bless things. I would just toss it out down the sink. Don't put it in the garden or anything because that salt will kill plants. There's nothing negative about it. It is neutralized. But it's not a water that I would use for blessing, because this was used for target practice. It wasn't used for anything specific, so I would just dispose of it. So just play around with it. There's no right or wrong, really. You're just practicing raising energy and directing energy using your palms and your tools. And instead of using an athame or a wand, you can just point your index finger or point your index in your middle finger and direct the energy right straight from your fingers rather than through a tool and to get a steady stream of energy rather than a general spray of energy that you're going to get from your palms. And then, like I said before, make sure that you ground and center it when you're done and just dispose of that salt water down the drain. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with me. And we'll be back next week for our next lesson. Until then, blessed be. Thank you.